ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find <laughs> wow that's so cheesy uh, but guys, I have basically seen all your comments, I have received your emails, and literally your thousands and thousands of requests. Um, and I'm basically here to deliver. I am here just for you. Um, but guys, if you don't know me, my name is Samuel Dada, and I'm a PhD student at Cambridge University um, in the most amazing college, enjoy my research in the best lab ever, and I want the same for you. So, I have decided to basically create a series of videos essentially taking you through the whole graduate or postgraduate application process. From writing your CV, to sending that all important email to a potential supervisor that you want to work with, to the interview process. Um, I am no expert by any means, but I am basically going to use my experience of what I have learnt um, to essentially help you. So, we've got this, we can do this, so... Let's go! Ooh. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, just before we get straight down to business, because we do want to get straight down to business, I just want to remind you guys to please subscribe to my channel, push that notification bell to be reminded of any content I release, give me a thumbs up, press that like button, comment down below if there's anything you want to see some more of on my channel, and also you can follow me on Instagram to keep up to date with what I get up to on a day-to-day -day basis as a PhD student at Cambridge University. Anyway, let's get straight into to it. Um, basically this video is going to be essentially guiding you through on how to give a good um, presentation whether it may be for your lab group or whether it may be for your PhD interview. I'm going to be guiding you through on how to give a good presentation in terms of visual um, presentation and also um, kind of an oral presentation in terms of how you deliver um, the presentation. So I hope this is very helpful for you because I have received so many requests on uh, my presentation that I gave um, during my PhD interview. Um, so I'm also going to leave um, the document of my pre uh, my PhD presentation slides in the description below as well. So if you want to access that, you can click on it and request it as well. Uh, but guys, this is um, a very crucial part. I feel like I have a very strong opinion on presentations um, in terms of my personal view because I do believe that sometimes, especially when you're in an academic setting, sometimes people do try and make presentations as complex and as packed as possible and I feel like that kind of loses the audience um, very quickly. So I feel like presentations and slides should always be as kind of light and as very flowy as possible. You can get the full information of everything in, you know, a journal. You don't need to put every single piece of data or finding on a presentation. Just put all the key, key information on a presentation, especially for an interview. If you have a very quick, short interview, you only need to basically give them kind of the overview of what you've done. So essentially an introduction, a background into what you have done in your research, the importance and significance of it, the methodology you use, um, kind of the important findings you've had and the conclusions and implication of what those results will have in the future. So that's kind of the general overview that you need to strive for when giving a presentation to someone, especially if you're giving a presentation presentation to people who are not within that field. I do feel sometimes people do try and make things very complex to essentially look smart but I think that's also very very counterintuitive because you don't look smart because no one actually understands what you're talking about or no one has actually digested any information whatsoever. So I feel like that's actually not a good thing, that's a bad thing especially if you're going for an interview where you know the panelists want to engage in your project and they want to ask questions about your project. Um, I think it's very, very important to make sure that you make it as simple and as engaging as possible. So I've actually, um, I have a video from my lab um, group meeting 
um, which I presented um, kind of my work that I had done um, for a few months. Um, so I'm basically going to be showing you that video um, because I feel like maybe it might be a good example. I'm not the best presenter whatsoever. On, under no circumstances am I a very good presenter. I am not at all. Um, but I do feel like I do take a lot of pride in terms of ensuring that the information I do give people um, is is given in a way that people can digest and understand. And please write in the comments if you do not even understand uh, what I've basically been talking about in terms of the presentation I give, because that would be a very good feedback for me because I do welcome feedback um, from every single different angles. Um, because at the end of the day, I want to improve um, myself as well. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, in terms of that, um, the clip I'm going to basically show you, um, I'm essentially going to show you just the introduction part of it. And I've made this um, presentation as visual as possible because I do feel like when you have too much text, people are always very concentrated on reading the text that you put in the slides and not listening to what you're saying. And I feel like the presentation and the slides should basically guide your voice. It shouldn't be the slide taking over your voice because essentially it's a presentation. You're not basically presenting an essay or giving an essay. You're presented. So the presentation should basically aid in the information that you're giving to the audience. So in my presentation, I know that I've been, it's very, very OTT. I do a lot of um, kind of gifts where things are moving around. I just feel like that's a way to kind of wake up the audience, get them engaged. Um, I don't really like things just being very still because I think that people do get bored very easily. Um, especially if you're, if for example, you're on a PhD panel and you've basically sat here for like maybe, you know, five hours and you've been listening to different different people presenting you want something that's captivating something that's engaging something that you're like oh i want to see what's next i want to hear what's next you know so i think it's very important to ensure that your presentation is as engaging as possible or as pos as you can possibly make it um so um yeah this video i'm just basically talking about my research which is in, into um phase separation of alpha synuclein which is implicated in parkinson's disease and i basically only present or show you guys the introduction because i feel like if i show you the whole thing it's very very long because that was almost like 45 minutes long presentation because it's a group meeting presentation however i'm only going to compile it to just a part of the introduction where i kind of build up the story so you can kind of gauge in terms of what direction i'm going in or in terms of kind of giving you the implications of this and the importance of this or the significance of um this um kind of research or what i'm kind of conducting essentially so i hope you enjoy it so stay tuned for the Clip. Okay, um, hi everyone. Um, I'm Sam or oh, Samuel. Um, I'm a second year PhD or going into my second year is a bit confusing. Um, PhD in the Vindriscolo group. Um, uh, my project is basically, or this part of my project is basically unraveling the aggregation mechanism of alpha synuclein through um, liquid liquid phase separation. Um, I'm just going to give a brief um, overview of Parkinson's disease, then alpha synuclein, and then go into phase separation before I get into the nitty gritty of things. Um, so as you guys all probably know, um, Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative disease after um, Alzheimer's disease. Um, it affects approximately over um, 10 million people worldwide and about 5% of the global population of over 80 years of age are thought to um, be affected by this disease. So the, miserable, uh, the most visible feature of this disease are the slowness of movement, uh, muscle rigidity and tremors at rest. Um, there are also many debilitating non-motor symptoms, um, some of which may present itself before the motor symptoms, um, these are like cognitive deficit, depression, anxiety, cardiovascular problems, and um, bladder dysfunction and GI dysfunction. So PD affects many areas of the central nervous system and different types of neurons. However, a lot of focus has been placed on the neurons in the brain region known as the substantia nigra. 
So in Parkinson's disease, um, dopaminergic neurons um, in the substantia nigra um, die, leading to um, char the characteristic motor problems that we see. Um, a distinctive pathology in most cases of Parkinson's disease is the observed clumps of misfolded proteins um, within neurons. Um, Lewy bodies are the most common types, and the major component of Lewy body is the misfolded um, protein called alpha synuclein. So, um, in Parkin, um, so if we want to kind of explore the structure of um, alpha synuclein in more detail, um, alpha synuclein is a 140 residue protein that, although natively unfolded, um, commonly assumes a random coil conformation. Um, in complex environments, its structure is determined and mediated by its three key domains. Um, the first is the um, alpha helical end terminal region, which is the lipid binding domain. Um, the next is the um, hydrophobic NAC region or the core region, which kind of mediates its self association through beta sheet formation. And the last is the highly um, unstructured negatively charged C terminal domain. Um, which is thought to be essential for the solubility and interactions with other proteins. However, its function is still very much unknown. But in general, alpha synuclein, the functions of alpha synuclein, it still needs to be like further elucidated. So, in the context of alpha synuclein aggregation, um, the conversion of alpha synuclein from its native to the amyloid state can take place um, directly through a deposition pathway following a more conventional nucleation growth process, um, where alpha synuclein initially forms um, the small disordered oligomers, um, which are typically thought to be the toxic species. Um, and this can then be converted to a more ordered oligomers called protofibrils, which can then grow into more mature amyloid fibrils. Um, and for many years, this has been the main and the only pathway for the study of alpha synuclein aggregation. So, so much of our knowledge um, within cellular biology um, is focused on understanding the functions and the structures of membrane bound organelles, such as the nucleus, uh, which contains the genetic material, um, the mitochondria, which is a powerhouse of the cell, the Golgi apparatus, which modifies, sorts and packages um, proteins for secretion. However, uh, a lot of attention has recently been dedicated to understanding a variety of membrane-less compartments in which the cell harbors. Um, these protein-based liquid compartments, also known as membrane-less um, organelles, can selectively permit the entry of enzymes and substrates um, to carry out various cellular functions. Um, examples of these are um, Oh, that pops up. Yeah, um, the nucleolus, um, which is involved in ribosomal synthesis, um, the P bodies, um, which is important in RNA um, storage and processing, and the pre granules here, which we have in the video, um, which moves, um, and it's the um, yellow condensates, as we can see. This is actually a C. elegans um, embryo that is just about to divide. And as you can see, the P granules are located on one side of the cell prior to cell division. Um, these P granules have been shown to emerge as a result of cellular stress, um, but they can also organize protein materials, localize genetic materials, and in general, they, they function as kind of micro reactors that provide distinctive um, environment for performing biochemical reactions. So um, these liquid droplets or condensates or organelles, as we like to call them, um, share most hallmark properties with actual liquids. Um, so they have a defined surface tension. They can um, they have a viscosity when you kind of bring them together. They fuse, they undergo ripening and they can relax into a spherical shape, just like any liquid materials. Um, so a wide range of interactions kind of facilitate liquid-liquid phase separation and govern the stability of the condensates. Um, interactions within these condensates are typically weak, um, non-covalent and transient in nature. Um, it kind of all depends on the multivalencies and the domain composition of the biomolecule in which you're looking at. 
Um, interactions of these sorts are or can be homotypic, so where you only have like proteins together, or they could be heterotypic, where you have like various different biomolecules come together, like a protein or alpha nucleon and an RNA. So I hope you kind of enjoyed um, that little clip of my group meeting presentation. As you can see, like I was saying, there are literally things floating around, things spinning around, and that's only to captivate the audience. Um, sometimes it's good not to maybe overdo it because it could also be very distracting and you don't want it to be distracting as well. So it's just keeping that kind of fine balance in between, giving the key information that the audience can digest and also making it as engaging as possible um, like I said I am NOT the best presenter whatsoever um, but I do think that this is a good way and I've all, always received very good feedback from people in terms of how I've always been able to present thin, things and even my PR was very happy with that and he basically asked me and was like oh yeah I think we should get more into doing more things like this in terms of engagement and stuff like that and I said yeah 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 but I do think um, this is a very good angle to go into when you're presenting information especially scientific information um, to ensure that everyone can basically digest the uh, information that you're basically given to them uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this video guys I know it's a short one and not me speaking for a long period of time but like I said the most important thing about when you're given your presentation especially when you're given a presentation for an interview for a PhD interview is to keep it short simple and sweet so ensure that you give a brief introduction um, to kind of build the whole picture the significance of the um, of your research, the aims, what you're looking into, then go into the methodology, how you decided to carry on this, um, then go into like your results, your key finding and kind of a summary, just showing the implications of your results and the importance for the future. And also you can also say future experiments that could be conducted as well. So yeah, it's just kind of bash, bash, brush because when you're under that kind of environment, it's very quick, high stress, so you need to ensure that you just deliver the right information quickly or else they could just stop you at any point. Also, it's very important for you to practice ahead of time um, because, you know, interviews are a very high stress environment and you don't want to go into, go into a high stress environment without actually preparing for it properly. Um, but yeah, guys, like I said, I have a link in the description below of the previous video I made um, solely for PhD interviews and also I have a link um, to kind of my slides I made for my PhD interview so you can have access to it, just re request it. But I hope that this video overall was um, very useful for you and you found it very informative. Um, but guys, remember to stay blessed, dream big and keep being inspired and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and goodbye.